What is going on? And welcome back to another episode of iCoach Nutrition Radio. Today's podcast topic is going to be all about dieting and going over some of the most common diet mistakes that I see so many of my clients making before we start working together, as well as so many people um, that are family, friends, um, you know, people on social media, um, and just some of the most common mistakes that I see with with people when it comes to trying to diet and lose weight and lose body fat. Um, and I'm going to help you to kind of gain some understanding, kind of a, you know, an overview, a 10,000 foot view here of what these mistakes are um, and why they're so common and why, you know, essentially the nutrition industry, this, this diet culture that we live in, in terms of, you know, the different uh, diets that are out there and workout programs that are out there and supplements that are out there. Um, how they've kind of influenced us in a, in a negative way um, and really put a lot of our culture um, in a very bad place in terms of what it means to, you know, diet and live a healthy lifestyle um, and be at a healthy body weight and at a healthy body fat percentage. And so as we kick things off here, these are going to be some of the most common diet mistakes. I'm going to go over what, what I would consider kind of like the top three diet mistakes. Okay, so number one is going to be not being in a place where you are physically, mentally, emotionally ready to diet, right? And so what do I mean by this? Well, if you're somebody that has just been chronically dieting for the last few years, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever, right? You're just constantly on or off a diet. You've tried every diet under the sun. You've done Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and Red Mountain Weight Loss and Optavia and Keto and Low Carb and Paleo and, you know, all of these different diets that are out here. And like you've, 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 you've got results, right? Or you've had success with some of them, but you're not still doing them, meaning that you lost weight, right? Only to gain, gain the weight back plus more, right? None of the things that you did were actually sustainable long term. Um, and you're in a place where, you know, physically, right? you've actually maybe even tried dieting here recently. And regardless of what you do, you're not able to lose weight anymore. Right. And so you what you'd be what we consider being like metabolically adapted. Right. And so from a physical standpoint, you're not in a healthy place to be able to diet or to be able to actually get results from dieting. Right. And so what that has done to you from a physical standpoint is it's, it's affected you, right? It's affected your metabolism. Um, it's affected you in terms of your body's response to eating in a calorie deficit and actually being able to lose weight and lose body fat from doing so. Um, it's affected you in terms of your mental and emotional health, right? In terms of just psychologically what that does to you after you have sat here and tried and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed. Right? It's so from a mental standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, you get to a place where you feel like something's wrong with you or that you're broken or you feel like no matter what you do, nothing's going to work. Right. And after this process goes on for years and years and years and years, you really just stop believing right, that it is possible for you to be able to live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. Um, you get to a place where, you know, you're frustrated, you're upset, you feel like you've tried everything and nothing is working for you. Right. And so you get into this, you know, desperate place of being able to or being willing to try anything. Right. You will go do HCG diet where they put you on, you know, the pregnancy hormone and they put you on a 500 calorie diet a day uh, diet or you want to, you know, you're willing to go get weight loss surgery or whatever it may be there. Right. Going to these like crazy, crazy extremes. So this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see is you want to lose weight, you know that you need to lose weight, your doctor tells you that you need to, or you want to, personally there, from a confidence standpoint, you know, you're not comfortable in your own body anymore, you, you don't feel good anymore, um, you're not happy with the way that you look anymore, the list goes on and on and on, and so if you're not physically, mentally, and emotionally ready to diet, then that shouldn't be your first step, your first step should actually be hey, I need to do the diet before the diet, if you will, All right? So what does that mean? That means, well, you, you have to get your body ready, right? You have to get your body prepared. You have to get your body in a place where it's actually healthy, 
right? First, before your body's going to be able to respond to dieting and what dieting should do and what eating in a calorie deficit should actually do to your body, right? And honestly, this is the majority of the clients that I work with. And that's why the first phase for most clients that I work with is not going right into a diet. The first phase is going through more of like a restorative phase, right? Where we're working on getting you to actually consistently live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle, right? Where we get your sleep and your nutrition and your exercise and your hydration and your stress management all dialed in consistently, right? To where you're fueling your body properly, right? And you feel your best, you look your best, you're performing your best. Um, we get you to a place where all of your hormonal um, aspects are in line, all your health markers are in line, right? You're just, your, your body feels healthy and safe and ready to be able to actually put that stress on your body uh, in terms of dieting, right? And so this is something that for some people could be maybe a three month restorative process. For some people, it could be a six month, a nine month, a 12 month, a multi-year. It just really depends on how many years we're battling, right? How much damage has been done up until this point, all right? And again, the damage that's been done, it's not necessarily something that's your fault. It's more so the fact of the, the culture of the industry, right? And all of these different diets that have been thrown at people, all of these different supplements that have been thrown at people and these exercise programs that have been thrown at people that has essentially, you know, screwed up their metabolism more and more and more after every single one that they do, okay? And so again, this is really one of the biggest mistakes that I, that I see is that you're not actually ready to diet. Your body is not ready to diet from a physical standpoint, you're, you're not ready to diet from a mental and emotional standpoint. And so for you, you can try and go do a diet and it's probably not going to work. You're probably just going to continue the cycle of dieting, losing weight, gaining it back, right? Quitting, right? Understanding that what you're doing is not sustainable, right? And just being on this constant start or stop cycle of trying all of these different things and nothing ever actually working and sticking long term. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is going to be doing unsustainable dieting strategies, right? When you go to do the dieting method, right? So you go and you say, all right, I'm going to do this diet, right? Let's call it keto. I'm going to cut out all my carbs, right? And I lose weight, right? Because what does cutting out your carbs do? It lowers your calories, right? You create a calorie deficit right? But then you realize that, wow, I can't stop eating carbs for the rest of my life. And you start eating carbs again, it adds back in calories, right? Now you start gaining weight back, right? And so what ends up happening is, is you cut out carbs to lose weight following the keto diet. Once you started eating carbs again, you gain that weight back, right? And so again, it's this constant cycle of doing the unsustainable method right? To get short-term results, right? Only to lose those results and be right back where you started in the first place. So with anything that you're doing when you start a diet, coming back to this number two mistake, if it's not sustainable for the rest of your life, then what's the point, right? If you're not going to follow this dieting protocol for the rest of your life, if you're not going to take this supplement for the rest of your life, if you're not going to do this exercise program for the rest of your life, right? If what you're doing in order to lose the weight is not sustainable, right? Then there's really not a point in doing it in the first place. There's no such thing as just losing the weight, doing whatever the method and strategy it was to get you there, quitting that method, quitting that strategy, right? Not doing it anymore and expect to keep those results, right? So number two, the second mistake that I see all of the time is the method and the strategy that you're using to diet and to lose weight is not sustainable, right? And so therefore it just leads to, again, this cycle of losing weight only to gain it back, sometimes plus more, right? And psychologically, what that does to you is it screws you up, right? Physically, it screws up your metabolism. Emotionally, it's extremely frustrating, right? And it causes anxiety, causes depression, right? Um, it causes, um, you know, a, a disbelief, right? It causes you to be, um, you know, to, to have, to, to be in a place where your integrity with yourself, um, it gets broken down, right? And your confidence goes down, 
right? And so number two is going to be, again, if the strategy that you're using, right, if the protocol you're using, if the diet that you're using to lose weight is not sustainable, if there's things that you're doing, like eating 800 calories a day, 1200 calories a day, if you don't think you're going to be able to do that for the rest of your life, and you're not going to be able to do that for the rest of your life, um, then you got to really think to yourself and consider, is this worth doing in the first place, right? So this is where things like, you know, wanting to lose weight for a wedding real quick or for a vacation or finding some quick fix, doing a detox, doing a juice cleanse. These things are just, they're, they're not actually serving you. They're not actually setting you up for long-term success. You're looking for a quick fix, for a quick solution that you don't understand the long-term effects of what it's doing. It's actually causing more damage than good. It's causing more bad than good. Okay. So that's number two. Number three is not doing the diet after the diet, okay? What does that mean? You can't diet for the rest of your life. By definition, what is a diet? A diet is where you create a calorie deficit, right? So wherever your maintenance calories are at that make you maintain your weight, you create a calorie deficit, meaning you, you eat less calories, causing a calorie deficit, which then makes you lose weight, makes you lose body fat, Okay. And look, you have to do that to lose weight. You have to do that to lose body fat. You have to eat in a calorie deficit. You have to restrict your calorie intake, right? That causes a stress on the body, but it's, it's, it's something you have to do in order to lose weight and to lose body fat, okay? The reality of it is, though, is that you can't do it for the rest of your life. This is why so many of you, you don't track your calories, right? You don't track your food intake. You just follow some diet, right? And you don't have the awareness around how many calories you're actually consuming on a daily basis. And so sure, you lose weight, but you don't understand how you lost the weight, right? You just cut out a food group or you do intermittent fasting or whatever, but you don't actually track the numbers, right? You don't actually track your nutritional finances to understand how you were able to lose the weight, right? To budget your calories to lose the weight, right? And so because you don't do this, you lack the, the awareness, you lack the understanding Right? And you don't understand that, hey, the calorie deficit is something that really should only be done for maybe two months, three months, four months, maybe five months at most before then needing to do the diet after the diet, which means you reverse diet your calorie intake up, which just means you slowly increase your calorie intake back up to maintenance calories so that you can actually maintain the results that you just worked so hard to get in the first place, Right. And so the concern here always from clients is like, I just had this amazing dieting phase. I just had this, you know, I got these amazing results with losing weight, losing body fat, but I'm scared that if I don't keep eating this many calories and keep doing this, then I'm going to gain the weight back, right? I'm scared that if I start eating more calories, then I'm going to gain this weight back. I'm going to lose these results, but it's actually the exact opposite, right? If you created a calorie deficit in order to lose the weight, in order to lose the body fat, right? And you've restricted your calorie intake, you've lowered your calories down in order to create that deficit. Well, now we've got to slowly increase those calories back up to where your maintenance calories actually should be so that now you can maintain, right? You can maintain those results because by definition, maintenance calories is going to make you maintain your weight. A calorie deficit, right? Is going to make you lose weight and a calorie surplus is going to make you gain weight. Okay. So you shouldn't be scared of gaining weight, doing the diet after the diet if you do it the right way. But again, most people, they don't track their food intake. They don't track their calorie intake. They just do something to make them lose weight, right? But as soon as they stop doing it, then they just gain that weight back plus more. So for you, you can do kind of whatever you want to do from a nutrition perspective, right? If you understand your numbers and you take more of this this, this flexible dieting approach, if you will, where you start to understand, hey, you know, calories matter, macronutrients matter, the quantity side of the equation matters, but the quality also matters, right? We've got to make sure that we're eating majority whole foods and good quality food. And so when you understand with nutrition that both of these things matter, all right, then it starts to give you a whole new level of understanding and self-awareness that helps you to be more confident and that, hey, this is actually the right way to go about this process and this journey. This is what nutritional periodization is, which means I start off, right, eating at maintenance calories, right, phase one, restoring my metabolism, prioritizing, fueling my better, my, myself properly, 
prioritizing my health and making sure that all of my biofeedback is dialed in, meaning that my sleep, my digestion, my energy levels, my sex drive, my mood, my performance in my workouts, my recovery from my workouts, right? all of these things are dialed in and, and I'm really, you know, I'm really feeling my best and performing my best. And then if I have a goal to want to improve my body composition, whether it be lose weight, lose body fat, build muscle, you know, whatever it may be there. Now I know how to kind of manipulate my body composition in that way. So if I want to lose weight, if I want to lose body fat, awesome. I know that now I need to create a calorie deficit. Three to 500 calories is really like that sweet spot. You really don't need to drop calories lower than that for most people, right? Unless you're just trying to get super, super, super lean. Sure. Maybe you're trying to drop it down more than that, but for most people, right? A three to 500 calorie deficit done consistently is going to be plenty, right? And so you do that dieting phase for three months, four months, five months, however long you do it, right? And then from there, you reverse diet your calorie intake slowly but surely back up to maintenance calories so that now you can actually maintain the results that you just worked so hard to get in the first place. Okay, so this is a summary, right? I could definitely go a lot deeper into all of these different areas, but kind of summarizing it back again, the three diet mistakes that I went over today, which are some of the most common diet mistakes that I see. Number one is that you are not physically, mentally, and emotionally ready to diet, okay? Number two is that you are using unsustainable dieting methods and strategies to help you to lose weight, to lose body fat. And although it might work in the short term, you might lose weight really, really fast, right? You're only setting yourself up for failure because if it's not sustainable, right? If the, if the way that you're going about the process is way, way too strict, it's way too restrictive, uh, it's, 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 it's not realistic for your lifestyle and it's unsustainable long-term, then you can guarantee you're going to gain that weight back. And most of the time, especially if you've gone through this cycle multiple times, you're going to gain that weight back plus more. Okay? And then number three, you're not executing full nutritional periodization. You're just doing a diet, but you're not doing the diet after the diet. You're not understanding that there are, there are phases of this process and this journey that you have to go through. You can't just go from not being on a diet to being on a diet to not being on a diet. That's not how it works. Right? You have to go through different phases, meaning eating at maintenance calories, eating in a calorie deficit, eating in a calorie surplus, right? going through nutritional periodization so that you can constantly work towards maintaining your body weight, losing body weight, uh, losing body fat, gaining muscle, right? and going through different periods, aka nutritional periodization, no different than with workouts and with training periodization, right? to be able to truly change your body, right? And truly be able to transform your body, losing body fat, gaining muscle, restoring your health, improving your performance and recovery, creating a healthier relationship with food and with your body, right? Setting yourself up ultimately to learn how to live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. So if y'all have any questions on this, if you want me to dive into any of this deeper, if you have any specific questions, please let me know as always. Uh, I appreciate y'all taking the time here to listen to today's podcast. And if this is you, if this is you and you've made some of these diet mistakes here, right? It's okay. You're a human being, right? This is very common. You're not alone. These are some of the most common mistakes that I see. But if I can help you, if I can teach you how to not make these mistakes going forward, then ultimately they're going to set you up for success long-term. And it's truly going to transform your nutrition going to transform the way that you feel, the way that you look, and the way that you perform. And it's ultimately going to transform every aspect of your life because the confidence that's gained through nutrition and living a healthy lifestyle transfers over into every other aspect of your life in a very, very positive way. So uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for the time and listening to the podcast as always. And if y'all have any questions or if I can ever do anything for you, please let me know. And uh, until next time. Thanks guys.